This is the Ben Tormers Trivia Podcast. We have assembled the world's finest sports and trivia dorks to prove once and for all that we are just as bad at this as we were at sports. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast, sports trivia for those of us who rode the pine. I'm your host for today's game, Scott, and we are going to be pitting the team of Benchwarmer Eric and Patreon supporter Tim Geving versus Benchwarmer Dan and newcomer Tucker. So I'm going to start with you, Tucker. Welcome to the bench. Thank you for coming on. Why don't you take a minute to let us know where you're from, what teams you root for, and anything else you'd like to share with us. Yeah, sure. So, uh, long-time listener, first-time caller, I suppose. Um, my name's Tucker. I live in the Hartford area right now. I'm from Virginia originally. Um, my favorite teams are the Carolina Pro Teams, the dreaded New York Yankees, and UConn Huskies for college sports. Uh, also, Chelsea and you know U.S. national soccer teams when I can get up early enough in the morning to watch soccer. Um, looking forward to getting started on the show tonight. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming on and for being a fan. We appreciate it. You'll be teaming up with uh, Dan tonight. Dan, how's it going? Uh, and also, I'll need your team name at some point, please. I'm doing great. I have no idea what my team name is because Tucker picked that out, and I was going to find out when everybody else found out. So uh, I suppose we could just go ahead and do that. Yeah, um, we realized that there weren't too many overlaps in terms of sports fandom uh, between Dan, the Minnesota fan, and me, the Carolina guy. So I decided to honor his favorite football team and my heritage, and we're going with the actual Vikings. Would mop the floor with the uh, the Minnesota Vikings, that's for sure. Well, a lot of teams would. Yeah, the Colts just did. Oh, 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 man. I don't want to talk about this. Let's let's just let's just move on here. Let's not talk about my team either. Okay, sounds good. The actual Vikings. Uh, let's go over to Tim. Thanks for coming back on, and thank you for becoming a Patreon supporter at the head coach level. We really appreciate your support, man. How's it going? Going great. I really guys appreciate all your guys' content. It's so much fun. Two times a week, you know, it's awesome. Uh, I've been here ever since the beginning, so it's it never gets old. It's awesome. It's just, you guys are fresh. It stays clean. I mean, I like it a lot. So uh, let's see that. Uh, what have I done since last time? Well, I'm going back to work tomorrow. That's new. So that's the first time since uh, April 4th. So uh, just sold my house. So, you know, all kinds of things going on. So Eric came up with our uh, team name. Go ahead, Eric. Have at it. So uh, Tim is unfortunately a Cubs fan, and Easy. I'm fortunately a White Sox fan. Um, so our team name today is going to be Why Can't We Be Friends? Go ahead, Dan. Why can't we be friends? Why can't yeah. we be friends? All right. So we have Why Can't We Be Friends against the actual Vikings. This is going to be a barn burner, I promise. And I do apologize in advance for halftime, but we'll get there. All right. <laughs> now on to the rules. We will be starting off with the tailgate to warm up the teams. This will be followed by four quarters of play, each with a different trivia style. The styles of quarters one through three will change from show to show, and I will explain them as we go along. Like any good sporting event, we will have a halftime show after the second quarter with entertainment questions pertaining to sports. And in the fourth quarter, our teams will wager from the points they have accumulated to see who are today's clipboard captains to be honored like the true bench warmers they are. All right, let's get this game underway. Question number one, Indy tailgate round. What racer won three Indy 500s during the 2000s and won the fifth season of Dancing with the Stars in 2007? Let's check it in. All right. Okay, why can't we be friends is checked in. The actual Vikings, go ahead and talk it out, please. Ooh, so um, I don't really follow uh, IndyCar that well, uh, nor do I watch Dancing with the Stars. So um... I had to come at it from the from the Dancing with the Stars angle because I wasn't sure who'd won that many. Uh, how many, did you say races or championships? I said Indy 500s. Indy 500s, okay. Oh, okay. So it can't be the name that I was thinking then, right? No, Cause... no, because she doesn't win anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was just thinking Dancing with the Stars. It would make sense that she'd be on it. Is it like, no. who? so who else would have been famous enough to be on that? Like Castro Nevis, maybe? I think it is Helio Castro Nevis. Uh, I seem to remember him from Dancing with the Stars, at least, so. Okay, then, yeah, he definitely won a couple Indy 500s. I say uh, we check in with that. All right, let's do that then. All right, so the actual Vikings have checked in with, I believe it's pronounced Elio Castroneves. 
Why can't we be friends? What did you guys check in with? We had the same answer. Well, how do you pronounce that again, Scott? Say it again. Julio Castroneves? I think it's Elio. All right. Both teams checked in with Elio Castroneves, and both teams are receiving points. That is correct. Uh, yeah, the guy just wins. All he does is win, I guess. No matter what. On the question two in the tailgate round. In 1999, this 10-year-old golfer became the youngest to ever qualify for the United States Golf Association Amateur Championship. Oh, yeah. Let's go ahead and check that in. All right. Hey, the actual Vikings have checked in. Why can't we be friends? You guys can talk it out. We both had the same answer, so Michelle, we... Do you know how old she is now? 30-ish. Well, what year was this again, Scott? 1999. Oh, then, yeah. As 10. So, assuming she was born in, say, like... 89, 90. 89 or 90. I mean, that would be. No, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll All right. Yeah. Check that in. Michelle Wee. Okay. Why can't we be friends? Just checked in with Michelle Wee and over to the actual Vikings. What did you guys come up with? Uh, we also had Michelle Wee. All right. Once again, both teams getting points. The correct answer is Michelle Wee. Off to a good start for both teams. And now that we've gotten those out of the way, let's uh, get a baseball question in. Question three in the tailgate round. This 26-year-old rookie bashed 10 home runs and just 67 at-bats in September of 1998 for the eventual champion New York Yankees. Uh, Yeah, Dan, I'm um, positive with this one. All right. If you're positive, let's check it in. Okay. The actual Vikings have checked in, which means why can't we be friends? Can uh, hopefully have a friendly discussion on this one. Who was on that team that was young? Um, or not even young, 26, isn't that young? No, now? right. And it, that was a rookie, you said, right? Yes. So 98, Jeter was younger than 26. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. So who's that one kid? Um, Not even kid. Jeez, it's killing me. It wasn't Mike Lowell, was it? I thought he started with the um, – he was in 97, he was a Marlin, was he not? No, I think that was the, the – I thought that was the other – Maryland's team. Um, trying to go through their lineup. Chili Davis was on the team. Yeah, he, I think he's a tad older than that. <laughs> His kid might have been older than 26 and 98. <laughs> Any chance I get to mention Chili Davis, it's happening, all right? so like It wasn't Brocious, right? Brocious was like 30-something then. Because, mind you, he'd be 50 now. What about um, Homer Bush? Sure, I'm good with that. I mean, he was on the team. I don't know if he hit any home runs. I don't. Th- I don't think I'm gonna get anywhere near it. You think Tino? Maybe just because he came up late. He's old. Yeah, but he was old. Was he old when he came up? There's a, there's a last name that's popping in my head, um, of Spencer, but I I have no idea who that is. So I'm I'm either good with going Tino Martinez or Homer Bush, but like I said, that name Spencer pops in, but I don't know why. So let's just go with Homer Bush, I guess. I mean, yep. Okay. Why can't we be friends? Just checked in with Homer Bush. The actual Vikings, what was your answer? Uh, this is the guy who threw, I think, the most famous nine six two out ever. It's Shane Spencer. Yeah, the name popped in Eric's head for a reason. The correct answer is Shane Spencer. Nice job, Eric. It's all yeah. right. Yeah, you nice. still got it right, man. <laughs> you still got it right. I mean, what do you want? The points? Yeah, but it meant nothing to me when it came in my head. <laughs> I really thought you guys were going to work that out. That was pretty impressive. I, yeah, as soon as he said, I have a name coming, I was like, I know he's going to say Spencer. He's going to say Spencer. I've seen this movie before. I know. Exactly, that. right. Yeah, it was a September call-up and just, you know, tore the world on fire in that month, hit a big postseason home run, and, yeah, never replicated that again. Never go against my mind again. You know what the problem is? I'm drinking beer. I don't normally drink beer when I'm on. Uh... You knew you are like, teamed with me, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Heading into the first quarter, we have a score of why can't we be friends with 20? And the actual Vikings went three for three in that round, and they have a total of 30. How you know it's the actual Vikings and not the Minnesota Vikings? This is fair because they don't usually have a lead going into any quarter, it seems like right now. No. Before we get to the first quarter, we wanted to let you know that we are on Patreon if you'd be interested in supporting us financially. Your contributions will be used to help us cover the costs that it takes to bring you the high-quality sports trivia you have come to expect from us. There's also some great perks that come with the Patreon membership to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast, including bonus episodes and Benchwarmers swag. You can find us at patreon.com slash benchwarmersTP. Thanks. 
All right, today's first quarter will be the Dean's List. The Dean's List. For this quarter, there will be three lists containing ten items where the teams will go back and forth, guessing the items on the list. If a team guesses incorrectly, the other team can attempt to finish out that list. Each team is allowed one mulligan to be used after an incorrect guess. Each item is worth ten points. All right, for the first item on the Dean's List, I need the top 10 scorers in Charlotte Hornets history, including Bobcat players. And we are going to be starting with Why Can't We Be Friends? How about we'll try uh, Del Curry? Del Curry is number two all time with 9,839 points. Over to the actual Vikings. This is my favorite basketball player of all time, so uh, Kemba Walker. Kemba! Is correct. Number one with a bullet, 12,009 points. Your favorite Celtic of all time, is that? Uh, that too, unfortunately. But, you know, life has a funny way of working out. It keeps sending my favorite athletes to Boston teams. All right. Back over to why can't we be friends? Uh, we'll play Larry Johnson. Grandmama checks in at number four with 7,405 points. Yeah, so uh, let's take off the... Most famous uh, Charlotte Bobcat, then we'll go with Gerald Wallace. Gerald Wallace is in at number three with 7,437 points. I'm going to argue with you that he's the most famous Bobcat, but. Uh... Well, he, <laughs> there's not that many people who have their associations with the Charlotte Bobcats, and let alone in a positive way. You're discounting Adam Morrison, aren't you? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, yes, I am. Yeah, okay. You don't know. That's not unfortunate. He was the number three pick. It was unfortunate for me. All right, why can't we be friends? Let's go with Glenn Rice. With 5,651 points, Glenn Rice is number five. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll take uh, Muggsy. All five foot three of Muggsy Bogues. <laughs> Muggsy Bogues is next on the list, number six, with 5,531 points. He was never a big scorer, like, within his seasons, but he was there for so long. that He was never a big anything, really. I mean, <laughs> Okay, why can't we be friends? We'll go with Felton. Raymond Felton is number seven with 5,311 points. Nice job. We'll stick with UConn and say Emeka Okafor. Emeka Okafor is number 10, 4,630 points. Back over to Why Can't We Be Friends, and there are two items left. We're going to go with uh, David Wesley. David Wesley is number eight with 5,241 points which means that the actual Vikings will have a chance to complete the list. We'll go with Gerald Henderson. Gerald Henderson. He is number nine, 4,701 points. You guys ran that list. Very impressive. Nice job. <laughs> Living here has uh, helped learning some of the Carolina um, sports. Well, then let's see if that uh, continues to help because next up, we have the top 10 franchise leaders in receiving yards for the Carolina Panthers. And the actual Vikings will be going first. So uh, we're going to go with uh, Steve Smith Sr., as he's now known. Steve Smith Sr. is number one with 12,197 yards. How about uh, we'll take with Mushi Muhammad? Taking number two off the list, Musin Muhammad, 9,255 yards. Uh, Greg Olson. Guys are just going down the list here. Greg Olson, number three, 6,463 yards. All right, we're going to go with Wesley Walls. Wesley Walls, not to be confused with Wesley Wells, is number four on the list with 3,902 yards. Don't question me on tight ends. I'm going to go with a guy who is terrible for every other team, uh, Ted Ginn Jr. Ted Ginn Jr. is number 11. Oh. He does not make the top 10 on this list. However, you do have a mulligan. Let's use it. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, there's, there's, there's more on here we're going to get. Yeah, yeah, there's a longer list, so let, let's use it. Okay, so the actual Vikings are using their mulligan, so let me know what you come up with. We'll go with Mark Carrier. Mark Carrier comes in at number six with 2,547 yards. Good, Paul. All right, we're going to go with uh, Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey is number five, 2,590 if he's on there. Yes. Yes, absolutely. He has to be. Oh, he had a thousand yard receiving season. So um Yeah. The bane of my fandom, Calvin Benjamin. 
Kelvin Benjamin, number seven with 2,424 yards. All right, we're going to go with Brandon LaFell. Brandon LaFell is number eight on the list with 2,385 yards. Back over to the actual Vikings, and there are two left. We'll, we'll go with um, another number two receiver, Devin Funches. Devin Funches is number nine on the list with 2,233 yards. Back over to why can't we be friends? Can you guys come up with the last item on the list? For fantasy purposes, I know who he is. Other than that, I probably haven't watched a game that he played. Um, we're going to go with DJ Moore. DJ Moore... Just this past week, eclipsed Ted Ginn for number 10 on the list. That is correct. 2,137 yards. Like, if I asked this question, if we did this last Tuesday, their answer of Ted Ginn would have been correct. Oh, wow. Why did we do this last Tuesday? It was, it was a scheduling thing. I don't, I don't know. You know, I was, I was just saying, we're running out of people here. I mean, we're getting down to rocket Ismail territory here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Eric, you said you're a tight ends guy. Who I'm, I was blanking on one guy's name. He was the tight end after Wesley Walls for like four or five years. Oh, jeez. Um, Chris, Chris Mangum. Yep. Nice, Eric. I was looking at this. I was like, I thought uh, D'Angelo Williams might have cracked this, but he was like 12th or 13th. We tossed his name around. Once Ted Ginn wasn't on there, I didn't think he would be a past Ted Ginn. Yeah. All right. So, so far we've got two lists and you guys have completed both of them. Let's see how you do on this one. Uh, Tucker being on the show, being a Hornets fan and a Panthers fan, I had to kind of do that for him. And he's also a UConn fan. So for the last list, please name the last 10 NBA draft picks from the University of Connecticut who were drafted in the top 10. Why can't we be friends? We'll be going first on this one. Just NBA, also to clarify. We're going to check in with Kimball Walker. (laughs) Kimball Walker, drafted in 2011, is correct over to the actual Vikings. You're not telling us what number he is? I mean, sure. He's number two on the list. Um, if you said that Walker was number two, then the one more recent would have been Andre Drummond. Okay. Okay, Andre Drummond is the most recent top ten pick from UConn in 2012. We'll go with Okafor. Mecca Okafor in 2004 is correct. All right, um... So we'll go with the guy who's taken one pick after Okafor, Ben Gordon. Ben Gordon, also in 2004, one pick after Emeka is correct. All right, we're going we're gonna to go with uh, Hashim Thabit. Hashim Thabit in 2009 is correct. Okay, I'm um, going to take uh, Rip Hamilton off the board. My favorite college basketball player as a kid, and my fandom remained into the NBA. Uh, in 1999, Rip Hamilton is correct. Also my favorite Detroit-based uh, rap band. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm a Villanova guy, and around that time, I hated his guts. So we're going to go with uh, Rudy Gay. As soon as you said around that time, I hated his guts, I knew exactly who you were talking about. Rudy Gay in 2006 is correct. Guy who once tried to uh, <laughs> murder Ryan Hollins on a basketball court, Charlie Villanueva. Charlie Villanueva in 2005 is correct. Back over to why can't we be friends? We have two answers remaining. How did he not go to Villanova? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the lack of eyebrows, I think. They didn't let him in. Yeah, they only, uh, I was going to say, they only recruit guys with uh, eyebrows. They tried to get Anthony Davis. It went real hard for him. I was going to say, <laughs> how did Anthony Davis not go to him? <laughs> they tried. They tried real hard. Scott, are you able to tell us like if they're at the end of the list or where we're at? Yeah, I can tell you. Absolutely. So the ones that are remaining are uh, in the eighth spot and in the 10 spot. Okay. Rip, Rip Hamilton was in the nine spot. That helps. In what year? Nineteen ninety nine. Let's let's go with uh Karan Butler. Karan Butler in two thousand and two is correct, which takes us over to the actual Vikings for the last item on the list. Um so yeah, I, I believe the final one should be uh Jesus Shuttlesworth himself, Ray Allen. Jesus Shuttlesworth himself in nineteen ninety six is correct. Ray Allen is the final item on the list. Dan, who was your guy? Uh, one that plagues me, Danielle Marshall. He would have been number 11, 1994. Good thing you didn't say it. Well, gentlemen, you got everything right on every list, so. Oh, man, uh, I was hoping here that, uh, you know, my weird team fandoms would give me a little bit of an advantage here, but uh, <laughs> why can't we be friends? Uh, took way, way, way too many of those that I was expecting to get. Nice job, guys. Yeah, great job, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> great job, Tim. 
All right. After the first quarter, we have a score of why can't we be friends with 170 and the actual Vikings after sweeping the tailgate round still ahead by 10 with 180, which means as of right now, Eric Spencer is literally costing you the game. It hurts. That brings us to today's second quarter, which will be pre and post game. Pre and post game. For this quarter, there will be five before and after style questions. For example, if I said, what all-time leader in receptions for the Indianapolis Colts was a Notre Dame safety drafted by the Minnesota Vikings, the answer would be Marvin Harrison Smith. Each question is worth 20 points. All right, question number one. What three-time coach of the year sparked controversy in 2013 after video surfaced of him using a racist expletive at a concert? I had a weird typo there, and it said racing expletive, and I was like, I don't think that's what he did. <laughs> that was going fast. Yeah. That's going fast. <laughs> yes, Tim. I'm trying to think of his name. Yeah, so um, I'm pretty confident about this, Dan, if you want to check that in. That sounds very good, actually. Yes, Tim. We'll check in. All right. <laughs> the actual Vikings have checked in. Why can't we be friends? Yes, Tim. You guys can talk it out. <laughs> Tim's sending me all the right stuff. I'm. I'm this is, this is all right. It's like, you're, it's like you're praising him for being a good boy. <laughs> no, it's what sounds like. <laughs> good boy, Tim. Listen here. Listen here. Beggars can't be choosers. I'll take the wins I can get around here, okay? Uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Tim. It's an Eagles wide receiver. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, is it the guy that's married? It wasn't the guy that's married to uh, Kendra Wilkinson. Um, no, that was. Uh, who cares? All right, it's not. It that was Hank Basket. Thank you. That was another guy. This this is a. Uh, we got on the front side of it. Three time coach of the year. That that's so vague. I think we have to get the back side of it. Yeah. I think if we get the back side, then the the coach of the year will fill in itself. So. 2013. White uh, white. White wide receiver. Yeah. yeah. Riley? No. Yes. Riley Cooper. All right. So now we got to Oh, so. Pat Riley hey, Cooper. Hey. There you go. You guys checking <laughs> in with that? Yeah. Let's check it in with it. All right. Why can't we be friends? Just checked in with Pat Riley Cooper. Actual Vikings. What did you guys come up with? And seriously, Tucker, this is all of you, man. You are, you are the, you're the real MVP right now. Uh, well, thank you. Um, I, this is a, a pretty strong category for me i love the before and afters or uh so the pre and post games my apologies um but yeah the kenny chesney concert was a, a nice giveaway although where else would you hear a you know, nfl wide receiver say a racial expletive i guess uh pat riley cooper is what we had both teams have checked in with pat riley cooper and both teams are correct gotta love riley cooper man <laughs> yeah how, how's he doing now you know i don't know someone should probably check on him <laughs> I'm afraid what we'd find if we checked on them right now. Let's yeah, just that's, leave them alone. That's, that's fair. <laughs> An episode of Breaking Bad. That's all that's going to be. <laughs> all right. Question number two in pre and post game. This safety was traded for two first round picks and was named commissioner in 2014. Got to be it, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to check in. All right. Why can't we be friends? Has checked in. Actual Vikings. Let us hear what's on your mind. All right. So. If it's Adam Silver, that yeah. opens the door for the last name to be Adams. Oh, does it? Yeah, because it's Adam oh, Adam's Silver. Silver. Yeah, Adams Ilver. Got it. Um, so a safety trip. Um, Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams. Traded. Yeah. So I mean, it must be him, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Let's go, so Jamal, Jamal Adams, Adams Silver. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Actual Vikings have checked in with Jamal Adams Silver. Why can't we be friends? Would you come up with? Uh, that's what we got to Jamal Adams Silver. Yeah, helps to know your current events, right? Recently traded. The correct answer is Jamal Adams Silver. Nice job. He was supposed to be traded to the Cowboys. I'm just going to go ahead and say I that. I know. They should honestly <laughs> should have traded for him at the deadline last year. We broke that story, didn't we? We did break that story. Yeah, I was hosting yeah. a game while that happened. <laughs> yep. You're welcome. Then Regis died, but you know, whatever. Yeah, it was it was an interesting day. All right. Question number three. He left the Patriots in 2017 and was part of the defense that defeated the Patriots 10 years earlier. It fits. <laughs> it does, yeah. It's half um, the battle. Yeah. Is that when he left? 
If that's when he left, that's the answer. <laughs> I think it is. Yeah. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I think that's what we go with then. You want to check that in? Uh, I, w- I mean, I want to keep thinking, but I'm all just, right, let's, uh, let's think the, the more I think about it though. I think that's right. And if it is right, I'm really proud. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's a great one. If that's right. Um, this is either going to be correct or it's going to be wrong, but really, awesome. I want to check this in. Yeah, let's do Tucker, it. I want to yep. check this in. All right, Absolutely. We're checking sure. in. All right. The actual Vikings have checked in, which means why can't we be friends? Can talk out loud. We'd rather not. I can't get off Matt Patricia. Yeah. What are you doing on him in the first place? <laughs> Honestly. I mean, he's, he's not a good coach, so I figured he's got to do something else with his time. Um, <sighs> but I, Scott, read that one more time. I can't. I've, I've already yeah. forgotten who's in the front and who's in the back. <laughs> that's pumped. a common problem. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what happens when you're on Matt Patricia. But anyways. Right? Uh, <laughs> that's just the gift that keeps on giving right there. <laughs> All right. So who was on that Giants defense that works with Matt Patricia? Who works with Matt Patricia? You can already see the art for that one. <laughs> Matt Patricia, Matt in, Patricia. A, yeah, in right. like a, a stock boy apron. <laughs> Just fitting things in the apron. Some kid next to him. <laughs> I got nothing. Was like was the income role on that team or I'm trying to think who those DBs were in yeah, state? Their starters or their Yeah. No, I mean yeah, for the Giants. I I I I I'm out. I'm about, I'm I'm with you. Um let's go with uh Matt Patricia uh, OCU you I don't even know if I can okay. say that. That's not a good sign. Scott doesn't know how to say it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just go with uh, Matt Patricia and Adams. Madison. I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> if I say enough names, it's going to work. Um, Matt Patricia Antonio Pierce. Is that with you? With? Yep, that's it. Nailed right. it. Why can't we be friends? Just checked in with Matt, Patricia, Antonio Pierce. Uh, actual Vikings. I hope you came up with something else. Uh, Dan, this is your branch. Yeah, right. and um, Eric was really close on it. I just wrote, I, I just researched the 2007 Giants defense yesterday for a, uh, for a set that I was writing and um, coming to you soon. And the name that popped into my head from the Patriots that left right around then would have been Jimmy Garoppolo. So we went with Jimmy Garoppolo, C.U. Minora. One team getting points um, on this one. The correct oh answer <laughs> is Jimmy Garoppolo, C.U. Minora. Protest. <laughs> Pretty sure Matt, Patricia, and Antonio Pierce works. I mean, it does sort of work, but no. It fits the question. It does fit. The, it works for the question. So points. There it is. We got them, Tim. All right, nice job on that, Dan. It, it was Bye. it was so bad and good at the same time. It had to be right, I think. Yeah, that was a fun one. I've been trying to fit in OCM and Europe for a while, and I, I <laughs> it finally clicked, and I was like, yes. But I'm next to Matt Patricia. I yeah. was just going to say, I'm like, so far we've had a lot of uh... – Fitting in. Yeah. All right, question number four. This outfielder slugged a career-high 34 home runs for the Mets in 2005 – and tentatively won the Tour de France the following year. I like that. I, I think the timing works out on both. So I think you're right. Should we check in with that? I don't know if I'll be able to come up with anything else. Yeah, I think so. All right. Cool. We're checked in. Okay. The actual Vikings have checked in. Back over to why can't we be friends? What's on your mind, gentlemen? Not much. Um, right. How are you? Uh, Eric, go ahead and just tell me who won the Tour de France in 2000. Uh, what was yeah, it, my, will, my wheelhouse, it would have to be. That's... It's right next to the tight ends. Is it? <laughs> tight oh, ends, wow. drafts, Tour de France. Yeah. I wish I knew about the Tour de France. I wish I could stop saying it France, too, and just say France, but I can't. <laughs> well, <it's> not... Um <laughs> doesn't sound right to say Tour de France. Tour de France, guys. Come on. Uh, uh. <laughs> it also doesn't sound right to call the uh, the founder of NASCAR, Bill France. All right. So who wins uh, Tour de France tentatively? Floyd Mayweather Jr. Because I think it's Cliff Floyd for the Mets. And that works with who? In the Tour de France. Landis? No. 
Cliff Floyd Landis. Yeah, who's that guy? Is that his name, Floyd Landis? Uh, that's what I've got. Uh, that's what gave me first. Come on, Tucker. Come on, Danny. Give me something. I'm looking, staring at you in the face. <laughs> Give me something. Floyd Landis, is that, was he a... I don't know. I, it sounds good, and I know that name for somewhere, and I don't know why, but I think that that's... I've heard that name before. I don't know. He could have been a guy that pumped my gas. I, I, but I just know that. Then we must have been at the same gas station. I agree. That name's in my in my head. Let's go with it. I don't know. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll check in with that. All right. So just to be, you're checking in with Cliff Floyd Landis. You know what? Don't the, when you say that it gives me less hope in my answer. I'm sorry. I'm just make, I'm <laughs> making sure that's what you're checking in with. Yes, yes? Cliff Floyd Landis. Right. But you're not confident with our answer. We're just like, yeah, that's a swing and a miss. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> Over to the actual Vikings. What you guys come up with? Unbelievably, we came up with the same thing. We also had Cliff Floyd Landis. He pumps gas and he almost wins Tour de France. I mean, he wins them and then he dopes and he doesn't win them. The correct answer is Cliff Floyd Landis. <laughs> nice Maybe, job, Tim. <laughs> Maybe he works. Next to uh, Patricia. Patricia, yeah, <laughs> just getting them all doped up. <laughs> I don't think Patricia. I don't think Patricia needs that. Probably, I really not. don't. All right, nice, nice pull there. That's that. See, that's a collective pre and post game team answer there. By why can't we be friends? Well done. We can be. We keep doing stuff like that, yeah, yeah. right? Until this weekend when the Cubs play the White Sox, which won't mean anything. All right, question number five. 2020 marks his 40th year in the NBA as a player, coach, and executive. In 1998, he had his lone 1,000-yard season for the Jets and was inducted into the Jets' ring of honor in 2014. Jets? The Jets had a football team in 98? They were pretty they good, too. Uh, Define good. Didn't they, <laughs> didn't they go to the <laughs> AFC Championship game? I mean, so did Mark Sanchez, but that doesn't make him good. What? Oh. That's it. Check it in. Absolutely, yep. Wow. Okay. The actual Vikings have checked in with exuberance. Why can't we be friends? Uh, let's try to up the energy a little bit and uh, listen to what you guys have to say. So we got to think that the NBA guy came in in 80, right? That's yeah. Years. I'm pretty sure I got my math right there. So yeah, 80 would have been like bird or magic. Well, that works with Curtis Martin. Could it be anybody else behind in that backfield? In that year? No. Uh, yeah, I just go with it. I don't think so. I think Steve. It's Kirk not. Is- I don't know, but it could be like Barker, or you know what I mean. It doesn't have to be Steve Kerr because Steve Kerr. Is, you're right. It's not. He hasn't been in the league forty years. You think anybody else in like the front office? Because I mean, they've got to be front office now, right? Would have to be executive. Yeah, you can do Larry Burtis Martin. I got nothing. Just say it. Just go Steve Kerr. I don't. I, don't I can't get anything to Curtis. I can't. And I mean, yeah. it's just like my Jermichael Finley from before. I just, I know that we probably work close, but we just can't get that. Much. Yeah. All right. Let's go with uh, Steve Curtis Martin. All right. Why can't we be friends? Has checked in with Steve Curtis Martin over to the actual Vikings. What was your answer? When he started talking about Curtis Martin, it made me think that I heard the question wrong. But I checked, and you did say receiver. Yeah, or his receiving lone, yards. His lone 1,000-yard receiving season. Oh, yeah. I missed that part. Yep. yep. So um, we got uh, Wayne Krabet right away on that, and then it hit us. We were talking about Kiki Vandaway. So Kiki Vandaway and Krabet. Yeah, you weren't that close, uh, gentlemen. <laughs> the correct <laughs> answer is Kiki Vandaway and Krabet. Nice job. Wouldn't have got there even if I heard the receiver part. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would I would have got us there. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I would have definitely got us there. I missed the receiver part. I just heard 1,000 yards and immediately went rushing. All right. So heading into halftime, we have a score of why can't we be friends with 230, and the actual Vikings have increased their lead and currently sit at 280. It is now time for the halftime show. There will be five entertainment questions pertaining to sports, with each question worth 20 points. Uh, All five questions this round will be about basketball movies. Question number one. What comedian appeared in both Above the Rim and The Sixth Man? You want to go with that, Tim? 
I think that's the yeah. best I'm going to get. All right, we're going to check in. Okay. Why Can't We Be Friends has checked in. Actual Vikings, please uh, let us know what's on your mind. Wait, Scott, Scott did you say this, The Sixth Sense, right? Nope, The Sixth right. Man. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, no, the answer's not Haley Joe Osment. Uh, He's a great comedian. <laughs> Tucker, did you say that you just watched Above the Rim? Yeah, I saw that a few months ago, um, and I okay. don't really remember the cast very well, unfortunately. Like, one thought I had was maybe Mike Epps, because he's a comedic actor who was in a lot of uh, similar okay. movies around that time. But, um, I mean, your guess makes just as much sense. Well, me. <laughs> I think I think Marlon Wayans is, like, one of the stars of The Sixth Man. Oh, that could be it. That is that the, the ghost one? Like, it's Angels in the Outfield, but basketball? Am I thinking of a different movie? I don't remember. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, yeah. It's, 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 I think it's him and Kadeem Hardison. Ooh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, I, I was wondering if we could get away with just saying the last name, Wayans, um, because of... No. You know, <laughs> no, <laughs> too many of them. Of them. <laughs> 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 too many. <laughs> you, could be talking about, you could be talking about Kim Wayans. You got all kinds of them. I don't know. Is it? Uh, yeah, I, I think um, Marlon Wayans specifically is as good a guess as any. All right, well, we'll say we're going to check in with Wayans. Uh, could you please be more specific? There are too many of them. Uh, <laughs> I guess Marlon then, right? Yeah. All right, well, Marlon Wayans, since you're not taking only last names, which every other trivia show does. <laughs> <All right. laughs> the actual Vikings have checked in with Marlon Wayans over to Why Can't We Be Friends? What was your answer? Uh, we had no idea. We went I Bernie. knew I knew Bernie Mac was in one of them, so I went with Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac was in Above the Rim. He was not in The Sixth Man, which is like Angels in the Outfield with basketball, sort of, I guess. His brother tragically passes and then is a ghost that kind of helps him along. Uh, the reason I, I – I mean, I would have accepted Wayans, but you guys were right either way. That's why I did that. The correct oh. answer is Marlon Wayans. <laughs> Uh, Bernie Mac was the one who I remembered from a specific scene in Above the Rim, which is why the Marlon Wayans thing wasn't clicking with me. Yeah, he's like the bum, and yeah. they're like yeah. making fun of him. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you have not seen The Six Man, it's it's actually not bad. It's it's pretty entertaining. You know, around the same time as Booty Call, right? I think it was the year before. <laughs> 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 not sure why you're lumping them together, but just you know, it's Wayans brother. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Wasn't we he calls Tommy Davidson and Jamie Foxx? Yeah, I feel like there's a Wayans in there. Somewhere. I mean, I, yeah, I'm sure there's a Wayans. It might be the yeah. sister. It might, I could be off completely. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kim. Yes. All right. Question two. In the movie Like Mike, Tracy and Calvin bond in the car while singing along to a popular song by what rapper? And I will give 10 bonus points if you also name the song. You're pretty sure on that one? I'm pretty sure I can name the song. This is your world, man. I'm just living in it. You <laughs> go. All right. Uh, we'll check in. Okay, actual Vikings have checked in. It's um, what do you want the song or the artist? I want the artist. The song is optional if you oh. want to take a shot at it. I mean, you might as well. We don't lose okay. anything. All right, it's um, it's DMX party up. You, sure. know, you know, I mean, he, you see how he sounded very confident. I'm going with him. Okay, <laughs> all right, fair. Enough. I was kind of waiting to see what Tim was going to. No, no, I, I'm just here to. Just talk and just every once in a while I'll say, great job, Eric. And I, You're playing a Scott game. I get it. <laughs> Especially in the halftime. And then I get yelled at for, for just talking, but whatever. Uh, why Can't We Be Friends has checked in with DMX and for the 10 bonus points, party up. Actual Vikings, what was your answer? I think there is actually something to lose if you guess the song because uh, y'all going to make me lose my mind up in here, up in here. Uh, DMX, party up. All right, so both teams will be receiving – points and the bonus on this one the correct answer is party up by dmx nice job it's kind of a, it's a fun scene in that movie it's a good movie i stand by it yeah i i saw it in theaters the day it came out <laughs> <laughs> don't say that why do you say that under your breath scott don't, i mean shot i mean from the mountaintop baby yeah you know what oh. listen hey i was 13 it was the first movie i ever went to by myself no parents yeah so that, that was pretty cool wearing my starberries about 15 bucks on Starburst? No, they were not 15 bucks. They were like nine something. Okay. Got store discount. 
You had a discount. <laughs> he wore he wore a ref shirt in, and they just gave him the discount. <laughs> I'm gonna try that. Yeah, right. You got some idea. Look at the shirt. Yeah, right? I got a name tag. It says right here. Yeah, you can't tell me that I don't work here. It says Jake from State Farm, but yeah, you know, I was I was a little early on that. Question number three. All right, what Shakespeare play inspired this 2001 film? Julia Stiles, Mackay Pfeiffer, and Josh Hartnett star in it, and it centers around an interracial relationship between a star player and the coach's daughter, as well as the jealousy surrounding his success. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, okay, you yeah. check it. Actual Vikings have checked in. What's that other one that came like right before Romeo and Juliet? Othello. Eric doesn't know any of them, but he knows them chronologically. Uh... A midnight, midsummer night's dream. Uh, Anytime it's literature, I just immediately go to Harry Potter. So, what Harry Potter movie was based on Romeo and Juliet? Oh, yeah. yeah, I love those Josh Hartnett oh, scenes in Harry Potter. What's what's a Lion King based off of? <laughs> no, there's jealousy there. It's Hamlet, I believe. <laughs> That's weird that I know that. No, but I think I was thinking the same thing. I just need you to tell me that. I think it's either Hamlet or Othello. I, that's my. Or it I could be something know. else. The only thing I know about Othello is they um, they mentioned it in King of Queens once. Um, <laughs> All my life, I will be driving home to you. <laughs> Just saying, let's go. I mean, Hamlet seems. Uh, let's let's go with Ham. Let's yeah. Hamlet, Hamlet, Hamlet. Is it? That's the uh, name yeah. of the pig from a uh, Toy Story. It's Just Ham. Yeah, yeah. But when he's in a play, he's Hamlet. When he gets drunk, he's really Hamlet. <laughs> when he gets drunk, when he gets drunk. <laughs> there you go. Why can't we be friends? Just checked in with Hamlet. Over to the actual Vikings. What did you guys come up with? I'm sorry, guys, <laughs> but it is uh, it is Othello. Damn it! I knew it was one. It was it was the movie O. Yeah, which is why I couldn't give the movie title because right. yeah, that and um, been a little bit for for a little while there, Julia Stiles was just in Shakespeare adaptations. That is correct. Taming of the Shrew was Ten Things I Hate About You, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, let me do it properly though. Uh, one team is getting points. Uh, the correct answer is Othello. What Shakespeare play was the Born Identity based off? <laughs> Twelfth Night. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, save the last dance. Which one was that? Also Twelfth Night. Well, yeah, also, that's, that was, was night five, right? Was the Lion King. All right, question number four. Love and Basketball follows the careers of Monica Wright and Quincy McCall, who eventually end up as star athletes for what Division I university? So, I got, Tim, I got it. We okay. Can Why can't we be friends is checked in. Actual Vikings, talk it out. So you think, yeah, I think it is South Central, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, I haven't seen this movie and I don't know that much about it, but I I did just listen to a podcast on it a few weeks ago. And I, once again, I remember nothing from the things I consume. Uh, one thing I picked up from it was that I'm pretty sure it's set in Los Angeles, but that's all I've got to go on. I don't know if they end up at a fictional college or a real one, um, but I thought it was a real one. Okay. Now, USC is a, USC is a private school. Mm -hmm. um, would they have... I don't remember the movie. Um, like it, like an image of like like a gold or yellow colored jersey is kind of sticking out in my mind, which is making me think USC. That could have just been their high school colors too, though. Yeah, it's it's better than anything I've got. I I thought when you when you said something, it might have clicked for me, but I I'm I'm not coming up with it. So okay, uh, we can we can go with USC if you want. That's that's fine. I've just got nothing better really. Um, and if you don't either, then we can check in. All right, All right. We'll, we'll go USC. Yep. All right, the actual Vikings have checked in with USC. Over to Why Can't We Be Friends. What'd you guys come up with? We, we also <laughs> checked in with USC. Both teams checked in with USC, and both teams are receiving points. The correct answer is USC. Nice job, Tucker. Maybe you did retain something from that podcast <laughs> subconsciously. Uh, subconsciously, I guess. It, more importantly, did they get it right? They did. Come on, yeah. boys. Gee, Chris, miss <laughs> yeah, seriously. Have you guys not, have you missed a question? Would you stop it? No. Hey, don't, they, don't they, jinx they, us. Yeah. Damn, if I would have known that, I would have brought it out up a long time ago. We're going to, we're sitting at the edge of the bench right now. Just leave us alone. Yeah. It might be a team. You've got a perfect game going. All right. Well, qu question five, question five is tough. 
Question five is tough. So, question five. What team does Common's character Scott McKnight play for in the 2010 film Just Right? What? <laughs> what team does Common's character Scott McKnight play for in the 2010 movie Just Right? I trust you, Tucker. Uh, <laughs> I'm remembering the commercials now, and that's all I've got from it. Uh, <laughs> there were commercials for this? Uh, I remember them all the time on TNT. Um, but okay. that's, yeah, the, it was a very brief window of time. Um, and I hoped to forget about it. I, I got nothing. I got nothing on this, Tucker. If you, uh, that's just what I thought. If that's what you see. Yeah. I, I, if we don't have anything else, I don't want to second guess my gut. Okay. Are you, are you guessing based on colors or are you guessing based on a little bit of memory? I think I can see the colors there too, but that's, um, in basics of what I thought the plot was. You want to you check it in then? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, I don't have anything that's going to overrule that in my mind. All right, mm-hmm. we'll check in. Okay, the actual Vikings have checked in. Why can't we be friends? Talk it out. All right, Tim, so what I picture is whatever, the movie poster, and it was Queen Lativa being hugged by this guy holding the basketball. <laughs> and... <laughs> And I'm guessing that was common. Um, like, like you mean like the actor, or it's like really common for people to hug Queen Latifah with the basketball? That's correct. Um, it's it was either the movie or it was just a, an episode of Living Single. I don't know. It was actually um, set it off the sequel tip off. <laughs> oh, nice. Barbershop Twelve. Um. So, but no, when I picture that, you don't see the front of his jersey, but on the side, it's the hideous hideous um nets like side of the uniform where it was just like this dark blue and red and was just not done well so i think it's the nets we're checking in with the nets yep. so unless you think unless you yeah unless you think it's something else let's go with it okay why can't we be friends Just checked in with the nets actual vikings tucker what was your uh, gut instinct yeah so um i remember the white um and i remember or i I believe the plot of this movie is that like Common's kind of at the end of his career and he's playing on a crappy team. Uh, so the Nets make sense for this time too, but we locked in with the Clippers. Okay. One team is getting points. The correct answer is the Nets. Oh boy. You jinxed us. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Heading into the second half, we have a score of why can't we be friends with 300 and the actual Vikings with 370. So it is still anyone's ball game. We'd like to take a minute to invite you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at BenchwarmersTP. We also have a Facebook group for fans of the pod called The Bench. Join us there to comment on the latest episodes and share cool sports facts and trivia. If you'd be willing to rate and review us on iTunes or Stitcher, we'd greatly appreciate the support so that other people may find this podcast. Thanks! Now on to the second half. Today's third quarter will be The Missing Link. The Missing Link. This quarter will consist of five questions with theme-linked answers. The teams will attempt to answer the questions and guess the theme. Each question is worth 20 points. If a team checks in first via chat to the host with the correct theme before the fifth question, they will earn 100 points. The other team can still earn 50 points with the correct theme guess. If neither team has checked in with the correct theme before the fifth question, each team can earn 50 points with the correct answer to the theme after the fifth question. Question number one in the missing link. This offensive standout admitted to sneaking out of the locker room during halftime of Super Bowl 27 to watch Michael Jackson perform. Check that in. All right. Why can't we be friends? It's checked in which means that the actual Vikings can talk it out. So Super Bowl 20 was 86. That was the, the Bears Patriots was Super Bowl 20. Oh, okay. So I was thinking mid eighties because of Michael Jackson, but yeah, my math there did not. So this is, check out at all. <laughs> this is the 93. This is Bill's Bill's Cowboys. Oh, well, okay. You remember MJ being the halftime show for that one or. Uh, it was around then. Okay. So, I mean, obviously the Cowboys would have been in a bunch of Super Bowls. This sounds like something Michael Irvin would have done, doesn't it? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go with that. <laughs> All right, we'll go Michael Irvin. All right. The actual Vikings have checked in with Michael Irvin. Over to Why Can't We Be Friends? What was your answer? Yeah, we also checked in with the uh, the great one, Michael Irvin. Both teams have checked in with Michael Irvin, and both teams are correct. He did later admit uh, that he snuck out to watch Michael Jackson, which, you know what? I would have done the same thing. I get it. So, yeah, I'm not mad at him. <laughs> Question number two. His undefeated streak of 173-0 and zero ended in a controversial decision in late 1998. I'm positive on that. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, then lock it in. Um, okay. That's, yeah. <laughs> I, I check it in. Sorry, but that's okay. not what I would guessed. If you're positive, go for it. Yeah, I'm positive on that. Okay. Okay. The actual Vikings have checked in with a positive answer. Why can't we be friends? What's on your mind? You, you, you got to know your host here, Tim, and he's he's probably still excited from the wrestling episode we had the other day. Um, you guys had a wrestling episode? Oh, yeah, it's has, coming. Yeah. So we hope it, we may have lost the uh, recording. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll oh, check. it. Well, listen, we'll have Dave come in and re record everything. <laughs> I, I I remember him having an insane streak. Um, yeah, I agree. WCW. So he did. I, I think we can go with uh, Goldberg on this. Not Gilberg. Goldberg. No, not Gilberg was amazing. He's probably way better <laughs> in my mind. Um, but I think we can go with Bill Goldberg. Okay. Why can we be friends? Have checked in with Bill Goldberg over to the actual Vikings who had a positive answer from Dan. What'd you guys come up with? Yeah, it's it's Bill Goldberg. Um Kevin Nash beat him at 173 and 0 with uh was it the taser that they they took him out with to 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 knock him down so he could he could lose. I think it was a taser. That's why it was controversial. It ended with a outside interference. Yeah, Bill Goldberg. Pretty controversial in uh, late 98 there at Starcade. Uh, it was a taser, stun gun, whatever you want to call it, and it was ridiculous, like most of WCW. The correct answer is Bill Goldberg. Points all around. The theme-linked answers thus far are Michael Irvin and Bill Goldberg. On to question number three. He won the NL MVP award in 1995 and joined the 3030 Club in 1996. Then we can check in. So Vikings have checked in. Over to why can't we be friends? I think that's it, Tim. Okay. Anything that I disagree. Like, no, I like I, it. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I think ni- I think I think it was Larkin in ninety five. So you're yeah. right. Yeah. Let's go with Barry Larkin. All right. Why can't we be friends? Has checked in with Barry Larkin. Actual Vikings, what'd you come up with? Uh we also came up with Barry Larkin. And you also came up with the correct answer. Barry Larkin is correct. Points for both teams. The theme link answers thus far are Michael Urban, Bill Goldberg, and Barry Larkin. Give me just a second. I'm thinking. He's in the Mind Palace. No, it's not working. Go ahead. <laughs> He's out of the Mind Palace. Question number four. This player was drafted in 1996, won a championship in 2001, and was inducted into the Pro Hall of Fame in 2013. Okay. It's going to be. Exactly. Yes, that's, that's it then. The second one? Um, the last thing yet. The last thing you typed. That's it. Okay. Uh, then we can check in. I, I know what year he went into the Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. And if it's All right, not- Eric. Yeah. It's a he. Okay, it's a he. We know it's a he. We got that. We got it narrowed down to there. All right, the actual Vikings have checked in. Why can't My we be friends? Gosh, that man. Talk it out. I, uh, I threw a Cubs hat on for you, Tim. I'm rooting for you. Well, uh, trust me. I noticed. I saw you watch you must put that other one in the washer. That's right. All right, Eric, tell me what you got. What do you know about the 2013 Hall of Fame class? To go from the the draft of the Hall of Fame in such a short time. Well, that makes you think NFL, right? It would have to be. There's not that short, though. 17 years, right? 96 to 12. No, I mean, Hall of Fame would have been 12. Oh, so then they, they had a – so that's five years from then, so that's – 2008, so they played for 12 years. 12 years in the Hall of Fame? You played 12 years, and then you went to the Hall. Is Ray Lewis in the Hall of Fame? Yes, he's definitely in the Hall of Fame. But didn't he play until later than 08? Nah, I couldn't. No, because he played with Suggs. Yeah. And Suggs was drafted when? Suggs, was, Suggs is still in the league, so he was... 9-10? Yeah, no, 
even maybe eight. It ought to be Ray Lewis, right? Uh, I feel yeah. like he played too late to get into the in thirteen. That's just crazy to go for two years and then be in, especially after two years. Like he played the Super Bowl. What year did he win that Super Bowl? He was on that last Raven Super Bowl team. Oh, and the lights? No, that wasn't then. Um, yeah, yeah, the lights went out, right? Yeah. So no, that was after. That was definitely past because they played the Niners. Yes. Right? Yeah. That was like 2013. So yeah, that's so not. It's no not right. Really Are we on the wrong sport? What about? Um, I'm thinking it's got to be one of the Lakers, maybe. But then from the '96 draft, it's just Kobe, right? Scott, I hate your guts. Um, I'm sorry, man. Because I can't give up on this. I can't. I know. How do you feel about Jonathan Ogden? Okay. Yeah, I mean. He was a 96 draft pick. He was on that Ravens team. Yeah. And was he's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. I'm let's good go with all that. Let's, 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 go like with John, let's go with Jonathan Ogden. Good. Now I'm exhausted. I'm going to take a nap. Okay, Why Can't We Be Friends has checked in with Jonathan Ogden. Over to the actual Vikings. What'd you come up with? A lot, lot sooner. <laughs> well, yeah, not all that a much lot. sooner. <laughs> when, you, when you changed it to 2013, that immediately put me on. That was uh, Chris Carter's draft class, and I happened to know that draft class. And Jonathan Ogden was in that draft class. So that he, he oh, checked damn. all the boxes. So we went Jonathan Ogden. Okay, so Kobe drafted in 96, won a championship in 01, but not the Hall of Fame in 2013. Iverson drafted in 96, played in the championship in 01, but not in the Hall of Fame. Only man that fits the criteria, drafted fourth overall in 96, won a Super Bowl with the Ravens, and inducted in the Hall of Fame in 2013 is Jonathan Ogden. Points for both teams, very impressive. Could not get off Ray Lewis for the longest time. Well, well, we did, uh, Peter Bolwer too, but I don't think he made it into the Hall of Fame. I don't think, I don't I don't think, think he did in the Hall. Yeah. Okay. We have one more. But uh, first of all, the theme linked answers thus far are Michael Irvin, Bill Goldberg, Barry Larkin, and Jonathan Ogden. Question number five, the final question of the round. He appeared in the World Series for three different teams and was listed in People Magazine's Most Beautiful People in 1994. You go. Is that right? I don't know. Why would you ask me such questions, <laughs> Dad? I don't know. Um, that would make sense, Tucker. Just because. <laughs> just because. Yeah. Now, um, uh, I can't confirm. Like, I can confirm half of this for sure, and it's not the uh, People Magazine half, as I'm sure you guys could have guessed. But <laughs> yeah, that that name jumped out to me immediately. How confident are you, Tucker? I mean, I'd say 80%. I'm talking into, I'm talking myself into it a little bit more as I go on, but um, it seems to fit everything. It it does. I'm just trying to think if there's anybody else that would have been in that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, think it over because I'm making sure that there's not another one who it could be. Yeah, I, I say go with it. Okay. All right. We will check in. The actual Vikings have checked in. Why can't we be friends? Think it out. I like your answer. I just I'm I'm trying to. You play for the three teams, right? Yeah. So let's 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 go with it. I like it. Right. He's a ha- he's a handsome man. He is. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go with uh, Tim's answer of David Justice. Okay, why can't we be friends? Is checked in with not Gabriel Landeskog, but David yeah. Justice. Uh, over to the actual Vikings. What'd you gentlemen come up with? Uh, yeah, we said David Justice as well. All right. Well, he did play in the World Series with three different teams, right? The Yankees, the Indians, and the Braves. And in 1994, he was voted as one of the most beautiful people. The correct answer is David Justice. Also, know your host, one of my favorite players growing up. Right, exactly. That's. I didn't want to say that, but... <laughs> <laughs> right, obviously. Okay. I think, but I, I, the, the reason that you I made you go back and reread it was because I think Grant Hill was on that list, too. But... Um, he obviously didn't play for, didn't play for the World, World Series. Series yeah. Yeah. Right, fair enough. Not with those ankles. Fair. <laughs> I, I think we just found out who Scott's favorite athletes are. They are all people's most beautiful people. I <laughs> honestly didn't even know that until now, but yeah, I guess so. 
All right. So the theme linked answers are Michael Irvin, Bill Goldberg, Barry Larkin, Jonathan Ogden, and David Justice. Kind of a pretty eclectic group there. Uh, we did have both teams submit answers for the theme. Actually, very similar answers, albeit different. So I will go ahead and go over them. After question two, uh, we had an early check-in uh, of the theme guests by Why Can't We Be Friends with an answer of appeared in The Longest Yard. After question four, the actual Vikings uh, checked in their theme answer with guest starred on Arliss. And then after question five, we had Why Can't We Be Friends change their answer to appeared on Arliss. I can tell you gentlemen right now, I've never seen an episode of Arliss, so I certainly would not make a theme about it. So neither team is correct. I mean, you, actually, you very well may be. I should probably fact check that. I don't know. I don't remember David Justice being on our list, but he certainly could have been. He was. <laughs> but I will tell you the, uh, the, the theme that I know for sure does fit because I came up with it. Uh, so what you really had to do here was think about the teams that all these guys played for. So Michael Irvin, the Cowboys, Bill Ger Goldberg played on the Falcons in the early 90s, Barry Larkin on the Reds in the mid-90s, Jonathan Ogden on the Ravens in, let's say, 2003, and David Justice on the Braves in the early 90s. All of them share one teammate. That is primetime, ah, Deion, Deion Sanders. Sanders. Deion Sanders. Wow. Never would have got there. I, I looked up Jonathan Ogden. He was not on – Arliss. <laughs> so it, it, it does. <laughs> I know you David Justice was, and I know Bill Goldberg was. I knew Goldberg and um, Michael Irvin both were. They right. were also both in the longest yard. So after yes. question two, both of them were, were correct on the right track. Uh, great theme, by the way. That was a good one. After the third quarter, we have scores of Why Can't We Be Friends with 400? and the actual Vikings with 470. So the deficit has not changed. The fourth quarter, known as Put Your Fours Up. This quarter consists of five categorized questions that teams will wager up to 100 points each, not to exceed their current point total. The fourth quarter, known as Put Your Fours Up. There it is. You guys get it live. Like I was going to say, I get it live. Right? It's awesome. Special. That's what happens when we sign up for Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few perks that come I'll, with it. Yeah, we should. Yeah, I'll, I'll do your uh, voicemail. Your, uh, voicemail <laughs> if you want me to. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll send an MP3 of whatever you want. Right? At a certain level. Eric said he'd do certain things at a certain level. <laughs> what were you saying thing. about Patricia? What, what hey, was that yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> listen, tattoos aren't off the table. You, you listen, and, uh, listen uh, Kim, for four thousand bucks, Dan, Eric, and I will we'll give you a day, whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I need to go. And I Matt Patricia, we'll, 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 get, we'll make Matt Patricia show up too. <laughs> He's got nothing else going on. He won't he be won't he won't by the time that. Day, yeah. Right? Yep. <laughs> Especially if you do it in January, he definitely's not going to have anything going on. Listen, just wear a mask. That's all I ask. <laughs> the categories for today are as follows question one hurricanes question two cyclones question three thunder question four lightning bolts and question five snowstorm it's now time for the teams to place their wagers now that the wages are in on to the questions Question number one in the category of Hurricanes. Please let me finish. <laughs> Both teams. I actually, Wahoo Whalers! I, I really don't care if you, if you want to, you know, whatever. Well, the, hurricanes number one. Have, the Hurricanes have played Brass Bonanza before. Just so. <laughs> <laughs> Who scored the game-tying goal with three seconds left in regulation for the Hurricanes in game two of the conference semifinals in 2006, sending the game into overtime? The Hurricanes eventually won the game, the series, and the Stanley Cup. All right, Scott, we're checking in. Why Can't We Be Friends has checked in. Actual Vikings, talk it out. My issue with this is that I think that this is a defenseman because in both of the runs to the finals the Hurricanes had, 
like their big like dramatic goals were mostly scored uh by defensemen. Okay. The issue with that um is that like uh Wallin is one of them who is known for like scoring no goals in the regular season and then scoring like five in the playoff runs, but those were mostly in OT. Right. And this was to send it to OT. Yeah. The other, other issue, which is the one clouding my memory the most is that um, (laughs) this playoff game was not uh, available on my television. So I did not see it at the time, which means I don't have a memory of it. (laughs) Going from what I know of, of Scott, I think this needs to be somebody that he knows. Okay. He, I he only knew two play. Hurricanes players on that team. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or at least knows now. Yeah. So, so that would be a name. Okay. And now I know a few more than two. I knew two at the time. <laughs> so um, Rod Brindamore was the captain. Um, right. Uh, Stahl obviously could have. He was the leading scorer that year. Justin Williams was on the team, although most of his dramatic goals are in game sevens. Um and not game twos though could have been him but they they had a ton of weird uh veterans who were like big names that were just on the team for one season that year but i don't think it was any of them yeah see i'm i'm thinking it's got to be either brenda moore or eric stall mm-hmm. and i think stall jumped out at me simply maybe because he was the the leading scorer on the team mm-hmm. it's a person that scott's going to know he's going to know brenda moore too though yeah. I like Stahl personally, but I I'm not the fan of the team. I mean, I I've I've learned some lore since I got here. Mm-hmm. I know Stahl scored a big goal in that series, but I mm-hmm. I don't know if it was that one. Yeah. So yeah, and um due to uh Gary Bettman's very very uh excellent TV negotiation, um I was only able to watch the final two uh, playoff rounds of this run. Yeah, I don't have too many memories of this series or this game specifically. Um, I don't know if this is a question that he asked specifically because he thought I would overthink it. <laughs> um, Never. Uh, Stahl, yeah, that makes sense. If, it, if it's a defenseman, I won't be surprised. But at the same time, like, you know, it's Eric Stahl. He was the best player, top scorer. Statistically speaking, that's the best chance. So, yeah. I think we go with that. All right. So we'll check in with Eric Stahl. Yeah. For 100. All right. Eric Stahl for 100 points. Over to Why Can't We Be Friends. Your answer and wager, please. So we wagered 100 points on a hockey question, um, and it's the brother of Mark, Jordan, and Jared, and recently traded to Buffalo last week, um, Eric Stahl. So, uh, yeah, don't overthink it. It was the top scorer, the best player on the team. Correct answer is Eric Stahl. So points all around. It's a great game, Tucker. I'm I, I'm sorry that I, I didn't mean to, I didn't know it was a source spot. I didn't know you didn't get the game, you know? I, yeah. Well, I mean, like when most of the playoffs were on the Outdoor Life Network before NBC was like, okay, we're going to buy it out and actually put it on some of your cable packages. Uh, the o- OLN. <laughs> yep. Uh, thank you also, Dan, for your confidence in my hockey player knowledge. I do know Eric Stahl and Rod Brindamore and Cam Ward. <laughs> Now you know Cam Ward. Yes, at the time, absolutely not, because not many people did. Because what about what about Corey Stillman? Uh, no, I know Peanut Tillman. Is that <laughs> no, <Nope>. no? Okay, <laughs> okay. did play in Carolina for a year. Yes, he did. right, exactly. Question number two in the category of Cyclones: the first former Brooklyn Cyclones player to pitch in a World Series was what former top prospect who took the loss in Game One in two thousand and eight against the Phillies? I'm good if you want to go with that. I think we checked this in. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, we are checked in. The actual Vikings have checked in. Why can't we be friends? You guys can talk it out. I'm fairly confident in Scott Kazmier. David Price makes sense, but like I said, I, he was a rookie in 08, yeah. and I don't think they I, – I just I, – I don't feel like they would let a rookie start game one, and Kazmier was kind of their, their ace. He definitely was their ace, yeah. So, are, we I mean, of anybody else, are we missing anybody else in that rotation? I would – I. I mean, if we are, I don't think it's anybody great. And I'm going to ask this because I don't know who the hell are the group Brooklyn Cyclones. Like, it's got to be a minor. Right. I don't know. I think you're right when you say don't overthink it, and I think we should go with the ace of the team. That would that would be my guess. All right. I thought there was something going on in that ALCS where it made 
Grace come in. But yeah. All right. Let's go, Casimir. All right. We're going to go with Scott Casimir. Why can't we be friends? It's checked in with Scott Casimir. How many points did you guys wager? Uh, 100. All right. For 100 points. And over to the actual Vikings. What was your answer and wager? Um, I think we had a very similar debate over on our side, but uh, we put 100 points on this question as well. And we also said Scott Casimir. Okay. Yeah. So this one, uh, it helped if you knew who the Brooklyn Cyclones were. Uh, they're a minor league affiliate for the Mets. Uh, and their former top prospect was uh, Scott Casimir, who ended up in Tampa Bay and started game one in the World Series. I feel like this should have been a Fred Hoiberg question. Well, uh, fair enough. <laughs> it, maybe it should have been in hindsight. Um, David Price, I believe, came out of the bullpen that, uh, that postseason. He was a rookie, and they were kind of using him. It's like an eighth inning guy. All right, so points all around. And that brings us to question number three. The category of Thunder. Which head coach was on the sidelines for the very first game of the Oklahoma City Thunder franchise? He choked and was fired after leading them to a 1-13 record. Right? Yep, that's it. Okay. We're going to check in. Why can't we be friends? It's checked in. Let's hear your thoughts, actual Vikings. Um, yeah, I don't remember him coaching this team, but it seems too neat to pass up. I I think he was the last coach of the Sonics. He choked. Yeah, that's it. It has to be. Yeah, uh, yeah PJ. Right? Yeah. It's PJ Carlissimo. All right. And how many points did you wager on that? For one hundred. The actual Vikings have checked in with one hundred points with PJ Carlissimo. Over to why can't we be friends for your answer and wager? We said the same. Can't make up any ground if you guys keep betting a hundred, though. <laughs> that, PJ Carlissimo. That is factual. Kind of like. Most of the stuff in this game. Uh, yeah, you guys picked up on the clue, it seems like. Choked in there. The answer is P.J. Carlissimo, which I totally did not remember until I started researching stuff about the Thunder for this question. I didn't either until you said choked. Yeah. After three questions in quarter four, we have a score of why can't we be friends with 700 and still holding on to that 70-point lead with 770, the actual Vikings. Question number four, the category of lightning bolts. In 2006, the San Diego Chargers went 14-2 and two and had 11 players selected to the Pro Bowl. Name any five of those players. Scott, how many, how many did you say total was there? 11. Okay. I'm trying to name all 11 here. Hold on. Of course you are. <laughs> well, we get double the points is what I heard. Right? <laughs> That's right. what I heard. <laughs> uh, 20 extra points for everyone after five. <laughs> I only got eight. <laughs> Man, this would have been a good sports agories. All right, we'll check in. The actual Vikings have checked in. So, Eric, feel free to name all 11 out loud. Okay, uh, I think I only got 10. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's unacceptable. I got, uh, let's start from special teams. We've got Nate Kading, um, the kicker. We got Kasim Osgood. Um, let's go uh, first. No, hold on. Let's go with the certain five. So, we got LT. <laughs> Rivers, Gates, Merriman, and Lorenzo Neal. Is that five? That's five. All right. And then the other ones we got are Jamal Williams, um, Hardwick, uh, McNeil, offensive lineman. Um, I think that's the rest I had. Yeah, and you said Kading and Osgood. That's yep. ten. Kading yep. and Osgood. All right, but you checked in with Philip Rivers, LaDainian Tomlinson, uh, Sean Merriman, Antonio Gates. And Lorenzo Neal. Yes. For how many points? 100 points. All right. And over to the actual Vikings. I need your answers and points, please. Well, uh, thankfully, we had a lot of overlap here. Um, we also put 100 points on this question. And uh, our five were Antonio Gates, Ladanian Tomlinson, Sean Merriman, Lorenzo Neal, and Nate Kading. Wow. Didn't go with Philip Rivers. Interesting. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. I, I so. couldn't remember. I mean, it makes sense that the quarterback of the team that went, what, 14-2 and two would be on them. Yeah. Yeah. So, so much talent on this team. I mean, guys that didn't make it, like Shane Olivier, Sean Phillips, Michael Turner was the backup running back. He ended up being really good. A lot of talent on that team. Um, so I will read off uh, all 11. Phillip Rivers, LaDainian Tomlinson, Sean Merriman, Marcus McNeil, Jamal Williams, Lorenzo Neal, Kasim Osgood, Antonio Gates, 
Nick Hardwick, Nate Kading, and the elusive number 11, Eric. Long snapper, David Bin. How come you didn't come on, Eric? I was just going to say, I'm like, what is it, the long snapper? <laughs> and it points all around. If it weren't for uh, that dirty, rotten rhymer, they would have. Uh... That's right. That's, that's <laughs> what he does. Him. He loses. Don't. He loses don't in the playoffs. Mention, don't mention his name, please. Yeah, you're right. We can, yeah, let's. I don't he's, want that to happen. Good, he's not in good shape. Yeah, and that I, would happen. That's so. Mentioned chargers, no too. names. That's so okay. chargers. <laughs> Whew. I mentioned no names at all. All right. George Steinbrenner is that what we're going for? That <laughs> dirty rotten right. See, this is why he's bad at halftime. See, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> the scores uh, after question four: the deficit has not changed. Why can we be friends? Has eight hundred, and still in the lead. The actual Vikings with eight hundred and seventy, with one question remaining in the fourth quarter. All right, gentlemen, we have arrived at the last question of the game. In the category of snowstorm, what phenom braved a snowstorm in order to take home the gold in the women's super pipe event during the 2016 X Games? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's a name. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, we'll check in. <laughs> okay. The extremely actual, confidently. <laughs> the actual Vikings have extremely confidently checked in. Brings us over to why can't we be friends for the last time? Talk it out. I know one female snowboarder. Okay. Chloe Kim. We checked in with Chloe Kim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to go back up to. Uh... <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, okay. Is All that right, an we'll actual check in? Yeah, I mean, I. No, I, I love it. I think it's better like that. I'm going to let Tim uh, make this decision. Well, we bet. We, we... Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Go. We bet zero, but we'll check in with Chloe Kim. Right. Why can't we be friends? Wagered zero and checked in with an answer of Chloe Kim. Actual Vikings, what was your uh, really high wager, and what answer did you come up with? But we put one point on this, right? Yeah, I for no reason whatsoever, just to do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we also put Chloe Kim. So, Well, I can tell you, both teams, you guys should have been a little bit more confident. The correct <laughs> answer is Chloe Kim. We didn't have any more points to wager. We didn't run out. <laughs> Anybody got some of them points? <laughs> the game has come to an end, and here are the final scores. Why Can't We Be Friends finishes with a very respectable 800. And our clipboard captains of the game, who are receiving the very coveted, specially made for you, Tucker, uh, the Rodney Pete Award, with 871 points. The actual Vikings. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll start with our uh, our Rodney Pete clipboard captain award holder, Tucker. Uh, you know, thanks so much for coming on. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for indulging us uh, in this craziness that we partake in. Uh, and any last thoughts on your end? Uh, yeah, honestly, thanks for uh, indulging some of my craziness by having like a question about the Charlotte Bobcats. Um, that couldn't have been easy, and uh, yet everybody did super well with that, which was pretty impressive. But no, thanks for having me on. I uh, really enjoyed this. A lot of fun. I'm happy to uh, continue being a listener from now on after you guys accepted my first call. Awesome. Yeah, well, we'll certainly have to uh, have you on again sometime. Dan, uh, very nice victory, sir. What do you have to say for yourself? Um, I just want to thank uh, Tucker because it's not often I'm carried on this game, and he, he did an excellent job. Tucker, you were pulling answers that I had no idea on tonight. Um, I think it was a good team effort, but you you carried me across the finish line there for sure. Yeah, that was so, uh, a great team effort, 50-50. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Anytime you want to come back, I'd be happy to be your teammate again. Other people like to win as well. Uh, I'm going to throw it over to our uh, head coach over there, uh, Tim. Thanks again for coming on, man. Always a pleasure. You, you know, we always know what we're getting with you. You're very consistent. You're like the Jeff Fisher of head coaches. For us. That's better. I wish I was. I wish I was eight and eight. I'd take that right now. <laughs> Son of a buck. Listen, well, oh, two, you well, got to start somewhere. Well, let's just let's just put it this way. <laughs> my my record here is the same as in fantasy football right now. It's zero and two. I got smoked in the first game when I was on, and it's kind of like the rest of my fantasy football league as well. Just not. It's just not close, lately, gentlemen. It's just not close. It's not a good thing. Um. 
So, uh, new episode, same result, lost again. Uh, Eric couldn't even help me. I'm sorry, Eric. You're I'm just a human encyclopedia. I love picking the brain. That's good stuff, man. Uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. You know, I love being on here. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Anytime. Just let me know when, when and where I'll be here. Sounds good. We like that. Eric, what's up? Oh, I feel like I let Tim down. I mean, we had a we had a good game. 800 points probably would have won most other games. So, um, but no, I love having uh, both Tucker and Tim on. This was great. Um, I love the questions, Scott. You know, I you know anytime I can go into the 20 minute draft bank that is my head and come up with Jonathan Ogden somehow, I still don't even know where that guy came from in my head and why I overlooked him for 20 minutes. But no, great game. Thanks everybody for coming. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I thought I, like I said to you guys in the chat, you know, what yesterday, this is probably the most difficult game I've written so far. Um, just as I was kind of looking through it, Tim, you weren't supposed to endure and suffer through this. I, this was all Matt, like he was supposed to be in your position. So don't take it personally. Had, you know, had we made the switch, I would have switched some stuff out, you know, sooner. So I just, no, just, that half just know this was supposed to be Matt suffering, not you. Just if you can take any sort of solace in that. Tim, remember that PJ Carlissimo made it uh, to one and thirteen before he was canned. So you you've got plenty of time. That's true. Yeah, you got a lot <laughs> of games. All there. kinds of time, gentlemen. You're screwed. And, and you're stuck if, with me. Yeah, and that means you're going to get one at some point. So yeah, the, problem, the difference was the, the difference was the the Thunder were paying him, and I'm paying you. So no. <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's a really good point. Thank you for listening to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast, and until next time. We'll keep the bench warm. That ball hit high and deep. Stretch. Stretch. Get on back there. They look up. You can put it on the board. Yes. Yes. Into deep left center for Mitchell. And we'll see you tomorrow night. That great music you're listening to is by Justin Nozick. Thanks to him for producing that music for us. You've been listening to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast. Make sure to check us out on all of our social media. We are at Benchwarmers TP.